friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about houseplant dupes. With houseplant prices like astronomically high, I mean they are coming down a little bit, but like in general houseplant prices are quite high, especially for rare plants. I wanted to talk about what you could potentially get instead if you want something with similar vibes and a lower price tag. So I'm just trying to save your wallet a little bit. And I'm not saying you shouldn't buy any of these plants that are the, the originals, not the, un, the not dupes. You can buy them if you want. If you want to collect them, that's fine. I have had some of these. I do have some of these. And I think sometimes it's nice to have. And if you're trying to have a big collection, that's fine. But if you want to save some money and get similar vibes, that's what this video is for. Really quick though, before I get into it, I just want to say if you are new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make house plenty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my house plenty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you as well. <laughs> right, let's get into it. So the first one on this list is the Philodendron Lupinum. It is an interesting plant when it gets big. It looks very different to a lot of other houseplants, but the likelihood that you're gonna find one in like semi-maturity or maturity is fairly low. I haven't seen any actually being sold within the UK. It like above a small size when they're quite immature. And the thing is, when they're immature, they look exactly like a philodendron mykins. Like, tell me that doesn't look like a philodendron mykins. It just looks exactly the same. They've got the red backs. They kind of vine and trail, even these small ones. If you showed me this picture and you told me these are philodendron micans, I would have been like, yeah, they're philodendron micans. They have like the same dark velvety leaves, red backs, viney kind of thing. Though the lupinum prefers to climb rather than trail because climbing is going to help it grow into the like crazy leaf shape like this sort of this sort of vibe. I mean, they look really cool mature, but the likelihood that you're getting one mature is fairly low. And also I found that they are so freaking slow growing. I had one for a little bit and it just like didn't produce any new leaves. I ended up giving it to Claire because I just wasn't feeling it. And I feel like if you're gonna get one small, you may as well get a Mykins because you're not gonna be able to grow it big anytime soon because they are so slow growing. And also for a small pot of the lupinum, you're talking like 15, 20 pounds. You're not gonna find a big one for less than 50, if at all, especially in the UK. I've not seen any for sale here, but like the Mykins, you can get a small pot for like zero to nothing. Like people give away cuttings of Mykins. I've given away cuttings of Mykins before and you can buy a big plant for like 30 pounds, like a huge, long, big trailing plant for 30 pounds. It's definitely, I think, a good trade-off. Similarly, you could swap potentially a philodendron Melanochrysum for a Mykins. So the Melanochrysum, again, in its more juvenile form, looks like this, the nice velvety leaves, beautiful, comes in a bit orange, and this is when you're not getting like these huge leaves. Obviously this looks quite different here. I understand that. But when I had my Melanochrysum, it did not grow big leaves. No matter how many times I tried to trail up a pole, it never pushed out this like beautiful big growth. And instead of getting something like this, you could just get a Philodendron Mykins. Because when you grow a Philodendron Mykins up a pole, like you can get it to mature and produce quite large growth. This picture is the perfect comparison because on the left, it's a Melanochrysum, middle is a Mykins, and then on the right, it's a Gigas, Gigas, whatever. But they look so freaking similar. I mean, obviously there's tiny little differences in each of them, but if you're growing your Mykins big on a pole, you can grow it very similar in style to the Melanochrysum and it'll probably size up a whole heck of a lot faster than the Melanochrysum. So that's something to keep in mind, save you the cost of a Melanochrysum. Nowadays, they're not too, too expensive. You can get like a small one for like 10 to 20 pounds or like 50 plus for a large one. But again, compared to zero to five for a tiny bit of Mykins or like 30 for a huge like trailing one of Mykins, you might even be able to buy a Mykins with big leaves that's been on a pole for a while and get that sort of Milano Chrysum look 
without the Milano Crescent price tag. So I think the Philodendron Mykins is a really great like substitute for the Milano Crescent and the Lupin. Up next I have a bit of a Hoya dupe for all of you Hoya heads out there, myself included. <laughs> This dupe is for the Hoya Crassi Petiolata Splash, which I mean, I think is an absolutely gorgeous Hoya. I do have one, but it did cost me not tons, but I think I got a two or three leaf cutting for like 30 pounds. It was a bit more on the expensive side, but you can get something like a Hoya Pubicalix Splash, which has very similar splashiness to its leaves, kind of similar leaf shape as well. You can get that for something like five to ten pounds for a medium-sized plant. You can get a big plant of it for a bit more. I just think getting something like the Pupacalyx makes a lot more sense and you can get a much bigger plant with very similar vibes for a lot less. I surprisingly only have the Crasipetiolata in this situation. I only have the expensive one of this dupe, but I would in a heartbeat get a Pupacalyx Splash I think that they are absolutely stunning and they have similar enough vibes that I don't think you would be missing the Crassi Petiolata if you only had the Pupacalyx. Like, I mean, that being said, I, I do have it, so <laughs> I don't know if I can say that for sure, but I think if you're wanting those vibes but know that price tag, definitely go for the Pupacalyx Splash. So the next plant dupe that I think you could fairly easily make is for the Philodendron Burly Marks Fantasy. So this plant is known for its beautiful sort of reverse teardrop shaped leaves. They're a light silvery color. They have a bit of venation in them, but not tons. But I think if you're looking for this sort of vibe, especially when they are young, you could go for something like an Epibrandum Cebu Blue instead. The Cebu Blue basically has the same leaf shape and you can get it to climb in a very similar way to the Burla Marks Fantasy. And the only major difference is the venation, but from afar you don't really see that. But like the silvery blue color is there and I think that they look close enough that from a distance you wouldn't be able to like pinpoint it all that much. Of course, both of them when they mature, they mature differently. The Cebu Blue grows kind of like raphidophora -y tetrasperma splits. Whereas the Burley Marks Fantasy doesn't really grow those splits, just kind of grows bigger in leaf size. They also kind of lose their silveriness as they get bigger. So if you're looking for the silveriness of the Burley Marks Fantasy, then you probably don't want to let it mature too much in leaf size. But personally, I wouldn't trail the Burley Marks Fantasy, whereas I'd be totally fine with trailing the Cebu Blue. So it just kind of depends, but that sort of long bluey silvery leaf, they're pretty similar in that. Also the cost of the Burley Marks for like a one or two leaf cutting, which is what I got mine as, oh gosh, probably like 25 pounds. Whereas a Cebu Blue nowadays, I mean, this wasn't the case before, before you used to be able to only get a cutting for like 15 pounds for a single leaf. So the price is massively dropped on the Cebu Blue now. You can get a few cuttings for like five to 10 pounds, or you can get like a huge plant for like 30, 40, if you want like a huge, huge, huge one. So I think if you're going for size, definitely go for a Sabu Blue because you can get a massive one for the equivalent price of like a single leaf or two of the Burley Marks Fantasy. So I think the Sabu Blue is also a great dupe for the Amidrium Medium Silver. So when the Sabu Blue leaf matures, it grows beautiful splits like I showed you and you know what the Amidrium Medium Silver does pretty much right off the bat? It grows splits and they both have a very similar coloring in them, but I think they could be fairly easy switched out for each other and it wouldn't make that big of a difference. Personally, I also find the Amidrium Medium Silver to be a freaking slow, 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 slow growing plant. Probably one of the slowest growing plants in my collection. I have one that has four leaves and at the beginning of 2022 it had two leaves so it grew two leaves in a year whereas my Cebu Blue grows so much faster. Given I don't have a mature form of the Cebu Blue so I can't really talk about that specifically but from pictures I think they look similar enough that if you're going for this split leaf silver vibe I would definitely pick a Cebu Blue over an Amidrium Medium Silver just because 
they're so so much easier to care for and so much easier to propagate and I feel like you have a lot more options with the Sable Blue than you do with the Amidrium, which you can pretty much only climb the Amidrium, I'm pretty sure. I've never seen them like just like hanging in a basket or anything like you can with Sable Blue. That's just my personal opinion. Also, the Amidrium is like way more expensive. I don't remember how much I bought mine for. I bought it like one leaf cutting probably for like 25 or 30 pounds. And it got root rot and stuff. It was like a whole ordeal, whereas I told you the price of the Sable Blue, they're much more reasonable than the Amidrium. So I'd pick the Sable Blue any day. The next dupe is for the Philodendron Whippleway, which, oh my goodness, it is an absolutely gorgeous plant. I fully support the Whippleway. I think it is beautiful, but I do not support the price tag. And I'm sure it's because it's uncommon and blah, blah, blah. But the Whippleway price tag is insane. Like, the only way you're gonna get a whip away is if you're paying like, at least 150 pounds for a tiny little plant. Whereas, if you buy something like a Parezo Verde, which has a very similar coloration in some aspects, especially if you're giving your Parezo Verde like tons and tons of light, you can get a medium plant for something like 30 to 50 pounds, which I know is still quite a lot of money, but compared to over 100 or more, which typically is gonna be more. I'm talking. I'm. I'm talking conservatively here with the price tag. They're gonna be expensive. So I would say that if you want this sort of mottled variegation of like the greeny spots of the whip away, then getting something like a Parezo Verde could be a good option instead. I know that the Whip Boy also comes in these sort of like pinky colors, the leaves come in pink and they're a bit lighter, but you can very nearly get a Parezo Verde to look quite similar to this in variegation if you're giving it high enough light and heat. They do quite need that in order to have the beautiful variegation, but it is completely possible and for a fraction of the price. Also, you're much more likely to be able to buy a big plant of the Prezo Verde than you are to get a big plant of the Whip Away. So if you want a big plant, maybe getting something like a Prezo Verde would be a better option. So also, there's like less variegated versions of the Whip Away, which have like kind of more yellowy variegation and big swaths of green in them. I think if you like that sort of Whip Away vibe, then you could very easily get something like a Philodendron Berlumarx Variegata for, again, a fraction of the price. And you will get leaves that look almost exactly like this. My Berlumarx Variegata looks essentially like this plant here. <laughs> and I got it for free as a swap. You can buy like quite a large one for like 60 pounds. I know it's not cheap, but compared to the price of a Whip Away, it is like way, way better in price in my opinion. And I find that the Burley Marks Variegata grows so, so well and fast and bushy that it kind of doesn't even compare. I, I don't think I would chance importing a whip away or buying a whip away for so much money when I know I can get something like similar-ish for a lot less. The pink is cool though. Like, I, I can admit that. The pink of the leaves when they come in like this, I do like that, but I don't like it for that price tag. <laughs> So the next dupe is for an Anthurium. I personally think that the Anthurium Crystallinum, the more expensive one, looks fairly similar to the Anthurium Clarinervium. So if you're just trying to get a velvet leafed Anthurium for not very much money, if you don't really care about leaf size on them, you just want like the dark, velvety, bright, contrasty, sparkly veins sort of Anthurium, and you don't care about leaf size, definitely go for something like a Clarinervium. I guess the Clarinervium is like a little bit like sharper or more angular in its growth, but I think they look similar enough that if you're just going for the vibes of Velvety Anthuriums, you could definitely get a Clarinervium, probably for half the price. Crystallinums for an established plant is gonna be at least 50, 60 pounds at least, whereas you can get an established plant of a Clarinervium for like 20 to 30, so half the price and you're getting a plant that is potentially bigger and will look fairly similar in the sort of home. So if you're just trying to get it for decorative purposes, of course I have both and I like both for different reasons, but purely aesthetically, I think you could get away with swapping one for the other. 
So that is it. Those are all of my houseplant dupes. I would love to hear what you think of my dupes. If you think they're completely wrong, let me know down below. Or if you think I'm right, also let me know. Also, I'd love to know if you have any other dupes that you would say for any of these plants or any other plants. Let me know. If you want to see me make another video with more dupes in the future, let me know about that as well because hopefully I can make that happen for you. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!